and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Delray Beach Historical Backroads, the Cathcart House. My name is Jaime Mayo, principal with H&M Architecture here in Delray Beach. And our friends at the Delray Beach Historical Society have asked me to share with you today the history of this amazing home, known today as the Cathcart House at 38 South Swinton Avenue in Delray Beach. This is the third oldest house in Delray Beach, built in 1903 and located in the Old School Square Historic Arts District, which is the original footprint for settlement in Delray, then known as the town of Lenton, and consequently became the geographic center of town. The district, also commonly referred to as the O-Shed, is the largest of Delray Beach's five historic districts. It features 176 structures, of which 101 of them are at least 50 years old. Every pre-World War I and World War II vernacular architectural style in the city can be found in this district. And the Old School Square Historic Arts District is a great example of how adaptive reuse of historic buildings increases economic feasibility of restoring many of the town's most significant buildings, which preserves the history, increases the value of surrounding properties, and helps to attract visitors. So the lots upon which the house is situated on were sold in 1903 by pioneer Henry Sterling to a Mr. John R. Leatherman, the builder of this house. Mr. Leatherman was born in West Virginia and was once a minister. And when he arrived in Delray Beach, he grew citrus like many of the early settlers did and left his most contributing mark as builder of three iconic structures in Delray Beach. The Sunday House, also located on the same block, the rectory building, and of course, this Cathcart House. The Cathcart House was designed by Mr. Leatherman in the French colonial revival style, and the house exemplifies many of the characteristics commonly found in this style, with its nearly square symmetrical exterior, its high-pitched roof, and the house's most iconic characteristic, its wraparound porch, occurring on both floors with its large overhanging eaves, decorative porch railings, and column capitals. The large covered porch served as a great space for the family to sit and enjoy the ocean breezes. And at the same time, the porch also functioned to protect the home and its occupants from sunlight, heat, and rain. To build the main structure of the home, Mr. Leatherman used very rare and now extinct black iron wood. This wood is a very close grained hardwood known to be the heaviest wood occurring in this country. And given its impregnability, it was even used at one time to build warships. They would say that cannonballs would literally bounce off the ships made from this wood. So it's safe to say that this home is here to stay. Mr. Leatherman had this wood actually floated here from the Bahamas and from the beach it was hauled here by mule and cart to the building site. In 1910, Mr. Leatherman sold the house to a W.J. Cathcart for whom the house is named after today. Mr. Cathcart was a traveling salesman who peddled potions, needles, pins, shoelaces, cloths, and his one-horse buggy up and down the coast between Jacksonville and Miami, struggling along the narrow, white oyster shell paved roads. He and his wife had finally settled in Delray in 1899, before purchasing the home from Mr. Leatherman in 1910. The Cathcarts also built a dry goods and grocery store at 137 East Atlantic Avenue, known as the Cathcart Building, which is actually the entrance to today's popular Pineapple Grove in downtown Delray. And interesting enough, on the second floor of his store was the offices of Dr. J.R. Quezon Jr., the town's first doctor who came to town in 1905 driving the town's first car, a one-lung Rio. Mrs. Cathcart sold lace, ribbons, and embroidery out of the same store, where often Seminole Indians dressed in multicolored clothing and brass rings in hair would also come to make purchases. The Seminoles would come in groups of 10 or more from the west on Atlantic Avenue, set up teepees on the back lot of the Cathcart building, and stay for about 10 days or so before moving on. And during their stay, they would provide much needed meat in exchange for goods, and they would also barter with furs and venison and staples such as salt and flour, and in turn, they would use that salt to cure alligator hides, which they would also use as barter. So the story goes that Mr. Cathcart purchased a home for his wife as a Christmas gift in 1910. 
He drove her by the home in his buggy and showed her the house wrapped in a red bow and they went on to live in this house for more than 50 years. It's easy to imagine the Cathcart sitting on the second floor veranda during the evenings enjoying the ocean breezes and they could probably even see the ocean in those early days from here. They used a cistern to collect their water and a windmill provided them their power. Mr. Cathcart refused to give up his windmill and changed to electrical power when it became available and his steadfast nature was evident when the city officials once told him the coquina wall along the sidewalk in front of the house was on city property and must be removed. Cathcart sat on his porch, shotgun in hand, daring city officials to touch the wall. When the Cathcarts passed, the house was then owned by Mr. James Journey, then Delray's vice mayor, and during his ownership, he completely renovated the home. Later, the home was owned by the Hubbard family and then Matera family. Then in 1971, Ross and Virginia Snyder purchased the home and lived there for 20 years. Virginia Snyder also helped establish libraries in the Florida Institute for Girls in suburban West Palm Beach and the Regional Juvenile Detention Facility on 45th Street in West Palm Beach. She even went on to run for mayor at age 66 in 2005 but unfortunately lost. Virginia's causes eventually earned her international notoriety as she appeared on 2020, Inside Report, Late Night with David Letterman, The Today Show, and even Unsolved Mysteries. The Cathcart House's charm even received its own notoriety when it caught the attention of the producers of the TV show B.L. Stryker in 1989, starring Burt Reynolds. In that show, Burt shows his aunt, played by Maureen Stapleton, a home that's for sale. And that scene was shot right here in the Snyder's front yard of the Cathcart House. Then in 2012, Virginia donated her papers to her alma mater, Florida Atlantic University, and continued to fight for causes important to her until her death in 2017. The Cathcart House is the story of Delray Beach, built strong, having weathered numerous hurricanes, changes and development, and carrying inside the walls the stories of pioneers, visionaries, and inspiring civic leaders. The local preservation community is pleased that currently the Cathcart House and many structures on this block are slated to be preserved and renovated by PEP Capital that continues to be inspired by the historic nature of the district. Thank you for joining me today and stay tuned for the next edition of Delray Beach Historical Backroads.